My favorite time of the week is the time I spend with you. Me too. Yeah. My favorite time of the week is the time I spend with you. This is my, this is this is my happiest time of the week, and then it all goes downhill for me. <laughs> No, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. I don't believe it for a moment. That's right. Don't believe it. Don't ever believe it. I'm counting on you. I believe in it. I'm counting on you. So today we're going to uh, continue our theme of healing anything. Does, Yay! Does, your, does, your, does your situation fit into that? Yeah. Okay. I want to know if your, relationship, if your situation was outside of everything. That would be very powerful. That would be very powerful. I'll just let you teach the class. <laughs> oh, me. I tell you. You know, when you follow guidance, it's hard to plan. <laughs> you know, because if you didn't got us, you're not playing it. So all of a sudden you're told what to do and you have to get a whole new definition of the meaning of spontaneity. You know, sometimes I can just be so sure that I know what I'm going to talk about when I get in here and then my inner voice will say something entirely different <coughs> that I'm supposed to focus in on. And I have to be willing to do that because that's what I've been working on for years is getting to the point that I can hear my divine guidance, my inner guidance mm -hmm. telling me exactly what to do so that I don't have to figure things out. Mm -hmm. Because the truth be told, I don't really want to do anything. <laughs> I just want to be straight up with you right now. That's why I, that's why I made, it early, made it early age the decision to do what I love because a person is doing what they love, never work a, they never work a day in their lives. Right. So I always tried to go toward everything I loved. I think it would really kind of save me time. It's like it's easier to forgive people you like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I'd just surround myself with people I liked. <laughs> just make the whole forgiveness process a lot easier. <laughs> it, was a, it was a brilliant strategy. I hadn't been doing it up until me, and I thought it was the other way around. Don't pay attention to the people that I really get along with, and we have a great ex relationship, and just spend all my time trying to be able to tolerate or change my mind about somebody who upset me that I don't like. So I was end up spending most of my attention trying to fix all the situations and circumstances and people that I really wasn't enjoying. And then I wasn't really spending a lot of time with the people that I enjoyed because I thought I had that handled. And that was so backwards. Because whatever you focus on, you have more of. So it was always something else for me to focus on, somebody else for me to forgive, something else for me to forgive, something else. Because I was working on forgiveness. I was looking at it as if I had to like hunt out the people that I didn't like so I could forgive them. Mm -hmm. and then, but then the truth told me, the course taught me, love taught me to just uh, you know, be in an environment and an energy of love that's moving through you so intensely and it's so full that you're overflowing with love. And so then you like this big old cup that, that, that's overflowing and then the overflow goes into everybody else. Mm -hmm. So you are always full feeding others. Mm -hmm. And so, so it's easier to forgive if most of your experience is joyful and loving. Mm -hmm. The more miserable you are, the harder it is for you to forgive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because that's all you got time to do is focus in on the thing you feel an agreement about. Mm -hmm. But if you're happy and you're enjoying your life and it's incredible, then you don't really have a lot of time to focus on the things you're upset about because your day is so full of things you enjoy. Does that make sense? Yeah. So all that time and energy that you give into grievances, <clears throat> that's just because you're miserable. Mm -hmm. You're deep. You're <laughs> deep. <laughs> Yes, the Course in Miracles says that in order for you to really experience joy, you have to realize how miserable you are. <laughs> then it's not until you realize how miserable you are that you will make a heartfelt decision. But if you try, keep on trying to convince yourself you're happy when you're miserable, then you have to stay in it for a while until you get out of denial about how you really feel. When you realize that telling the truth about how you feel is much more important than what you say. Think about that for a second. Well, I didn't even know what I was just talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're about to listen to me when I don't know what the hell I'm saying. <laughs> but it must be God, because I don't know what the hell I just said. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> All right, so I'm going to say a few Course in Miracles workbook lessons to warm us up and to warm me up and to get the vibe going. You can just listen and you can say it. It doesn't matter. I just want you to just feel our one. Just look around the room right quick. Would you mind? Just look, look, look back there and look at everybody. These are people you must not ask for their phone numbers. <laughs> We want to keep on liking each other. Let's just keep it like this. <laughs> All right, we got a good plan. Don't blow it. Okay. We everybody to see who not to talk to. <laughs> Leave your pattern alone. Let your pattern rest for a while. <laughs> but you know, that's all you're looking for is your pattern. <laughs> and it'll be right there. But that, isn't that right? So I'm just going to so I'm gonna share a few chords and people's workbook lessons and then you're going to go into a deep section. All right, here we go. Take a breath, take a breath, take a breath, take a breath. We're going to take a little journey. Let's take a little trip. It's impossible to see two worlds. It's impossible to see two worlds. 
It's impossible to see two worlds. It's impossible. No one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. No one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. But we say, no one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. No one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. I loose the world from all that thought it was. I loose the world from all I thought it was. I say you loose the world from all you thought it was. You loose the world from all you thought it was. Breathe. You are safe right now. And you created this safe moment that you are experiencing right now. It, it is a sign of how much you love yourself. Dog, don't it? I say you love yourself. You're not kidding in loving yourself. I'm so proud of you for loving yourself. I'm so proud of you for loving yourself. I'm so friggin' proud of you for loving yourself. Dog, don't it? You're just great guys and gals. Course in Miracles workbook lessons. I love those Course in Miracles workbook lessons mm -hmm. because they're what makes the whole thing work. You know, they help to <coughs> make the whole thing work. So today you're going to be talking about is healing certain? I mean, if you really solved it, is it really certain? If you healed it, why do you have to keep on dealing with it over and over again? So we're going to talk about this. It's going to be on page 20 in the Manual for Teachers, in the Course in Miracles book. <coughs> I'm gonna read the paragraph in plain language, and then we're going to see what was the instruction we were given to give us what we want. Do you want what you say you want? Mm -hmm. It's not a trick question. <laughs> Do you want what you say oh, you yeah. want? Yeah. 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 Enough to say yes. Healing is always certain. Healing is always certain. Healing is always certain. Healing is always when there's a healing, you know there's no doubt it's been healed. If there's a real healing, you have no doubt that it's been healed. If you have a real solution, you have no doubt that it's been solved. So a so a healing is certain. Then it says, it's impossible to let illusions, it's impossible to let the false ideas be brought to the truth and then keep the false ideas. It's impossible to bring your illusions or your false <coughs> ideas to the truth and still keep the false idea. I had a false idea that I'm a cat. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm brought to the truth that I'm a human, so I no longer keep the idea that I'm a cat. Mm -hmm. The once that I get the truth, <laughs> then I let go of what's <laughs> false. <laughs> now, what the truth is gonna always <coughs> demonstrate is is that your false ideas don't have any value. Your false ideas don't have any value. False ideas don't have any value, and the truth will show you that. The truth is that I'm holy and I'm innocent, and you're holy and you're innocent, and you're beautiful and you're powerful. That's the truth. That's the truth. And so thinking that you are insecure, lacking, dysfunctional, and afraid has no value. See? The truth demonstrates the lie has no value. Now, a teacher of God, now that's a demonstrator of love. That's someone who teaches people how to divinely party like a big dog. <laughs> we are the party like a big dog angel brigade. <laughs> it's, it's us. Our wings are invisible so that we will match among the regular people. <laughs> The only thing that slightly gives us away is the way we shake our booties. <laughs> That's what we have to watch. We had to go shake in booty school before we got here so that we wouldn't give ourselves away because we're angels. We're beings of light. 
You're a light being. That's what you are. You're light. Mm. That's why angels fly. Because they take themselves so lightly. <laughs> right? So the teacher of love has seen the correction of his errors in the mind of the other person recognizing it for what it is. What does that mean? It simply means when I recognize your mind for what it is, then I have corrected the mistakes in my mind. When I see your mind as being a powerful mind, then any errors that I have that you're not powerful, it's been corrected. The ones, the ones that I recognize the truth about you, any mistakes I have about you are corrected. And the truth is, I recognize that each and one of you have very powerful minds, and each one of you, you're creating whatever you're experiencing, and it's always, it can always be changed. No matter what you're going through, it can always change for the better. No matter what you're going through, it can always change for the better. Change doesn't always have to be in the other direction. That's why we're afraid of change, because the first experience that we had of change was the experience of leaving an environment that was 100% unconditionally loved and whole and complete mm -hmm. to being here having to occasionally deal with constipation. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big change for an infinite being. <laughs> so I'm like, that's quite a shift. <laughs> God good to, you know what I'm saying. Uh -huh. Can I be real with you? I know, because you know everything you do is to take care of that body that's sitting in that chair. You know that, don't you? You get up and go to work so you can feed and clothe that body and house that body. And you know, and then you're hoping, you're hoping, just hoping that somebody might want your body before it's demolished. <laughs> I was working on my shutters just the other day. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to tear it down and just start all over. You know, I can't do the thing with my body now that I used to be able to do with my body as much as I don't want to admit it. It's changing. Mm. So now, thanks to continuing my spiritual development as I got older to increase the awareness of the power I have to create with my mind, mm -hmm. to compensate for what I don't do with my body anymore, <laughs> then I find I can create things with my mind using the universal laws and truth that I used to have to physically work to make happen. Mm -hmm. I just attract it, or it just mm -hmm. shows up, or it just manifests. So it doesn't, take, it doesn't take as much physical labor for me as it did when I was younger because my mind is now doing the heavy lifting. Mm. My consciousness creates people mm. who are easy to be around mm. and generous and loving and fun. My consciousness creates me spending every day doing the thing I love, which is sharing love, <clears throat> like I'm doing right now, and then getting a chance to work with people one-on-one -on -one and do it. Just because I changed my mind, then I was able to get into a way of living where I'm given everything I need to stay so that I'll continue to be a vessel for love on this planet that's full of people that's afraid, waiting for somebody else to be the loving one. <laughs> and then I'll be loving, as soon as everybody else is loving. Because all of us are trapped nice people. <laughs> Yeah, it's like all of us are just the most loving beings in the world, but we encased in this fear, and so we can't get out to each other because we like, oh, let me out of here. I'm a loving being, but I'm encased in my past, and I'm encased in what happened when I was a child, and I'm encased in my race, and I'm encased in my gender. I'm just encased in my fear. Let me out because there's a loving person in here. <laughs> and then people on the outside seeing this. <laughs> coming down. <laughs> They're scared of you. They don't want to come up right now. It's like you can just see the rescue workers coming to save somebody. They've been trapped and they run around the corner and see them go, oh hell no! I ain't trying to say, I ain't trying to say that. Oh. So, you might want to practice this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> 
<laughs> I'm telling you. The black man from Mars. <laughs> I don't know about you all, when I was a little child, I really thought everybody was crazy. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I, I came here and I thought, I couldn't figure out why we just didn't feed each other, clothe each other, house each other, and share with each other. And if we gave to each other, everybody would have what they needed and nobody would be hungry or cold. Yeah, right. And I would like go, exactly. and I watched, I was like watching adults, watching all the stuff on TV, even as a kid, because I, I was a strange kid. I mean, when I came home at like, like nine, nine years old, I'd walk in the door and get the newspaper and sit down and start reading it. My, my brothers and sisters just kind of looked at me all the time when I was growing up because I came here knowing that I was more than a body and that this was not the ultimate reality and that um, I was used to being able to fly. I was used to being unlimited. I wasn't. I wasn't used to being condensed within this little, this little, little tiny body. And it was a black body. And when I was born, there was still segregation where I grew up. So not only was I in a black body, I was in a black body that was that was being looked like I was segregated from everybody and couldn't go to the movies and had to go to the back of buses and go into the back of restaurants and. You know, it was a really different kind of world. Only go to the amusement park once a week. It was a different. So I was like convinced that God hated black people. Yeah. Yeah. It was like that was a kid. Yeah. That's what I was. I did something. I don't know what the hell it was, but it must have been a Lulu. <laughs> I was trying to figure that out. You know, you know. And and so what I'm saying is, we all have to get back in touch with the part of us that knows who we really are, so that we can so we can handle this experience that we're having right now. It's called the dream of forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. yeah. you just, you're just—you're not bad. You've just forgotten who you are. Yeah. And so healing is remembering who you are. So when we say healing, we're not talking about putting something on a physical wound. We're talking about letting go of the fear that blocks the love that wants to permeate your life. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. So it says that having accepted the atonement for himself, the teacher of love has also accepted it for the patient. Now what does that mean? It means if I accept the atonement, if I accept the undoing of my mistakes for myself, if I accept the love and innocence for myself, then I've also accepted for you. Let me give you an example. I believe that I create the way that I see things and the way that I feel about things, and I'm not a victim of the world that I see, and that whatever has happened is coming to me based on my consciousness, first and foremost, and that I have a lot of beliefs I don't even know I have that are obviously manifesting things I don't know why they're showing up. Yeah, exactly. You know right. what I'm saying? So the once I accepted that it's true for me, it was no longer made any difference whether anybody else agreed with me or believed me. That's how I could tell when I had finally accepted the truth, was I didn't care if anybody else believed it. Mm -hmm. As long as you're trying to believe something, you'll be continually concerned about other people's opinion of what it is you're trying to learn, and you'll also be trying to, you'll be trying to put it on them because you're trying to convince yourself. Like I can always tell when I'm in the presence of somebody who doesn't believe what they're talking about is because they're trying to convince me of it. So y'all know where I stand. Y'all didn't hear that day. I know, I know, I know, I know. If you teach most what you, if you teach best what you most need to learn, and I'm here teaching, then I'm the most unforgiving person in the room. I'm the one who has deep grievances, grief, grief, deep fears, deep sense of separation, deep, all of the stuff this book is talking about you need to get rid of, I'm it. <laughs> because I'm the teacher. Yeah, and right. the teacher is always the learner in every situation. It's just that you try to remind yourself of something and, and, you, you, and you figure that you can never forget something that you're reminding everybody else about. So you start to be a teacher because it, it makes sure you're going to hear the thing that you need to hear to heal yourself so you can be happy. <coughs> and I want to thank you for being willing to watch my healing process while you're going through yours. That's really cool. But don't you make me different from you at all. I'm not different from you at all. The only difference between you and me might be my willingness to go to these tools faster. <coughs> Because I am now no longer convinced that I know everything. It took me a while to realize that. Not only did I know everything, I knew it was best for y'all too. <laughs> Especially for y'all. <laughs> you were the main ones I knew how to fix. You know, just if you all just got y'all's act together, then my life would just work. <coughs> Keep on it, will you? Let yourself have some joy so you can share some with me, please, Angie's. <laughs> Stop being so stingy with your love. 
<laughs> so, what if the patient uses sickness as a way of life? What if a person just uses unhappiness as a way of life? What if a person just uses drama as a way of life? Because they believe that healing is the way to death. There are some people that believe if you're really, really happy, you're going to die. If you really let yourself have everything you deserve, you're going to live another day. That shoe would drop. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Like when you have days go really good for, for a long time, like you have several weeks and everything seems like it's been going great, you, you're scared to get out of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> you're like wondering, what's going to happen? You know, things can't keep going. So we, the, the Course in Miracles says there's a part of us that's afraid to be happy. It's absolutely says I want to be happy, but it's totally. I can sometimes just watch myself express my exuberant joy up here and just be a regular person having a good time. I teach like you, just like y'all. And I will look out there, and I swear you, I swear to you, some people have a look of total terror in their eyes. Now, you haven't seen people look more afraid or more uncomfortable than when I'm most outrageous. Because they, it scares people when they actually see a happy person. They don't know what that look like. <laughs> Man, that was, you ain't never seen a really happy person. <laughs> well, I'm going to show you one. That's what I'm working on, right? He said, so when a person thinks that sickness is a way to death, that unhappiness is the way of life, that you should be miserable all the time, he says, when this is so, a sudden healing might precipitate in intense, not regular, but <laughs> intense depression. So a person that's used to being miserable gets extremely depressed when they're suddenly happy. <laughs> yeah. I said, a regular old miserable person that's used to being miserable most of the time, except on Christmas. <laughs> that's the one official day that you can be happy. <laughs> that's the one day we feed everybody. They have to do the best they can for the next 364 days. I know you only need one meal a year on Christmas dinner. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's special. You eat a Christmas dinner, you don't have to eat anymore. <laughs> that was funny depending on how guilty you feel about not feeding people. <laughs> That's all right. You don't have to feed nobody for Christmas. Haven't you noticed? <laughs> <laughs> So that means that when you take away that, per that take away that person's misery and the thing that they keep themselves unhappy about, he says that, that person can have such a deep sense of loss that they might even try to destroy themselves. You you could feel so depressed from getting everything you want that you kill yourself because you got what you wanted. Wow. You would you could you might try to kill yourself just because you got what you wanted. Wow. And then it says you will have nothing to live for. Because I was living to try to get it. Now I got it. What's the point of living? So I just killed myself. Why? I just got what I wanted. <laughs> so we make sure, in order to live for a long time, we make sure that we never get what we want. Check that out. Now, so your happiness and your healing must wait. Your happiness must wait since you would kill yourself if you got what you wanted because you're so used to being miserable and unhappy in some way, you're in the habit of it so you could get depressed. See, see how Spirit's talking to us? It's like, boys and girls, now you're in advance finally ready to be happy one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're the ones we picked up in the little yellow buses, but <laughs> y'all need extra love. You need an extra dose of love. And so we want you to know that you're so used to not having what you want that we must warn you that when you do receive what you want, it's going to send you into intense depression because you don't know how to deal with that. You're used to being miserable and making your way around misery and unhappiness. So we're getting ready to give you the real deal, but we really need to prepare you because you're going to probably feel intensely depressed and have a sense of loss so deep that you might even try to kill yourself because you have nothing to live for, so you may ask for death and have a nice day. <laughs> that's, that's straight up. So we're going to wait for your healing, for your protection. We're going to ease your goodness into your life at just the speed you can handle it so that you won't kill yourself. Mm -hmm. So right now, at this very moment in your life, you are experiencing 
as much happiness as you can handle. I would like to officially tell you that you are as happy as you can be right now. Isn't that depressing? <laughs> If you were just a little teeny weeny bit happier, you might go psycho on me. You just try to take everybody out. So you are as happy as you can be right now. You're in the relationship that's as happy as you can handle right now. Your financial situation is the perfect financial situation that you can handle right now. Because we are not going to give you all more happiness than you are ready to receive so that you won't get intensely depressed and then try to sabotage yourself because you don't think you deserve the good stuff that I'm giving you. So stop pretending you're ready for more happiness than you are right now. Now, in the next moment, you might be ready for more. But this moment that I'm experiencing is as much as I can experience in this moment because it's what I'm experiencing in this moment. So you're experiencing it. All you can experience right now, right now. This is it. Now, so we might want to reconsider what we'd like to happen in the next instant. <laughs> Would y'all be willing to work on that? Yeah. Because there's no point in dealing with this one. It's already a result of something you've already done. So that's already done. It's over anyway. That's what's so good about time. It takes away all the stuff that bugs you. Except the stuff that you still keep using time to remember. Because when you use time to remember something that happened in the past, then you're using the present to, and then you're bringing the past into the present. And so then you re experience it again. Mm -hmm. So that's why you go through the same thing over and over again. You use this moment to think about something that happened in the past and then you recreate it in this moment because you're using the most powerful time there is to think about wow. something that's already happened to recreate it again and then you wonder why your life is boring. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so before I go to that was that was one paragraph of a course in miracles. Would you like to yeah. We're going to brag today. We did a paragraph of the course. <laughs> <laughs> We're geniuses. So, <laughs> so, before I go to the next paragraph, I'm going to take five minutes to give you an opportunity to try to absolutely destroy every single thing that they heard in the form of questions. And I, no, but no pressure. No prejudgment at all. Uh, that was like peace and love mm -hmm. and health as much as happiness. That's all included right. in it. That's it. All inclusive. It's all inclusive. Okay. Yeah, you got you as healthy as you can be. Right now. Right in <laughs> this moment. And if you were just a little bit more healthier, you might take yourself out. But isn't that, a, isn't that an interesting, per, interesting perspective? Yeah. Yeah. See, what I like about A Course in Miracles is not that I necessarily get it when I first hear it because it's very different. But what blows my mind is I'm so thrilled that I'm actually hearing something different. See, that's what I don't understand. That's like, I'm so bored with stuff that I'm glad to hear something that's totally different even if I don't understand it. It's still, I, I never took that perspective before that, that um, the reason why I'm not any happier than I am right now is not because I'm, such a, I'm so miserable in the sense that I don't deserve to be happy. The truth is I'm being healed in this moment and what I'm experiencing is as much happiness as I can receive without sabotaging or harming myself right now. That's what's really happening right now. It's not saying I'm not capable of experiencing more happiness. It's just saying that there's a part of me that's afraid to be more happy now. And I need to realize that that's the only block is my fear. And so, anyway, I so went off again. Okay, question. Did that help? Yeah, I, I have a follow-up question. So, I've experienced in my life when I'm like, am feeling really happy and really abundant, then that is the point where I do want to sabotage myself. Mm -hmm. And 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 so, what's that like? Is that the same? Mm -hmm. That's the same thing. That's the exact same thing. You reach your upper limit. Which means something is happening to you that when you reach your upper limits, it means something is happening to you that's more than you think you deserve. Whenever you think you're receiving more love than you deserve, more support than you deserve, anything more than what you deserve, then it takes you into a realm where you try to sabotage it because you don't think it's real. 
It's, it, it, the point <laughs> is, you think it's more. If I kept, if I kept saying, I love you, I love you. I think you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. It just thrills me to see you. I, I look at you and I remember God. It's oh, just amazing how much perfection that I see oh, sitting yeah. in the yeah. That there is a part of me that is you and a part of you that's me. It thrills me to know that there's a part of me that's this beautiful that I could be looking at that's me. I'm just so glad you and I want to serve this purpose to go to another level of consciousness together and evolve into the joy the peace that we absolutely are and you are innocent and you are sinless and the truth about you is nothing will ever change that. Would you think a person like that would be easy to be in a relationship with? <laughs> but I'm not going to accept it until I believe it for myself. Yeah. And then right. I think a person that's telling me that is BSing me. Yeah. So if I say that to a woman who doesn't believe it about herself, mm -hmm. she'll think I'm just the biggest con artist that she's yeah. ever seen. Oh, you got game. You just tell you. <laughs> You're gonna be asking me to come up to see your holy pictures. I know what you got. I know what you got in there, and you're black too. I know what you have done. But somebody that was on the same level of consciousness with me and, and could feel the sincerity of what I'm saying would be absolutely mm. thrilled to connect with me yeah. because they would be able to recognize when someone was telling them the truth. Mm. Yeah, wow. Mm. Nice. So I try to be as loving as I can be to anybody I'm around to see who's attracted to that yeah. and yeah. who runs away. And I spend a lot of time alone. <laughs> <laughs> more than you would suspect. <laughs> I'm in your hood in two seconds. Get the hell out of here, man. You know what I'm saying? You're not like, well, going to deal with me a long time because I never shut this off. Oh, yeah. I'm always focused on the evolution of my consciousness and my soul. It's not something I do for an hour on Sunday and then go back into regular thinking. Even if I go back out into the world and go to McDonald's and I see the server coming up to me, the first thing I'm going to try to do is remember that that's me and ask her, how is she? And then I say stuff like, and I see you receiving tons of abundance and tips today because that's what you deserve. Mm -hmm. See, once you start to realize it's you you're talking to wow. and it's your consciousness that's going to create your reality, it automatically let, makes you let go of the, like I said, the truth makes you let go of the illusion. The illusion is that I don't have enough and that I can't be loved. So, so if I want to believe I can be loved so I can allow myself to see the love that's always there, then I have to give it because the only thing that's missing, the only thing that's lacking in any situation, the only thing that's lacking in any situation, the only thing that's lacking in any situation is what you have not given. The only thing that's missing in any area of your life is what you are not really giving, but you think you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brother. So, Earl, I am very encouraged. Are you encouraged? By the <laughs> All right. I am so encouraged because um, I'm starting to realize that this is such a win-win situation because, see, like, if I'm at a certain level where I can only receive so much love, spirit or the divine is always going to be there and support me. And where I get into problems is where I start thinking I should be further along mm -hmm. or I need to be at this level. That's where I sabotage myself. Absolutely. Instead of accepting, hey, this is only um, as much love as I can take right now, and it's okay because I am supported. Would you pass this around for me? And there are a lot of new faces. I want to give you a chance to, to get on my contact list because I video these classes and send them out to the people that's on my contact list so they can see them again. And I got all my classes on YouTube mm -hmm. and on my website. Repetition is the key. Plus, I get to know I'm not here. <laughs> yeah. uh, my brother, there is nothing that a teacher wants to hear more mm -hmm. than the person that they're sharing with saying that they're motivated. Mm -hmm. Because a good teacher is a good motivator. That's all a teacher can do, mm -hmm. is try to be a means to motivate. That's it, the rest of it, because once you motivate it, you'll take care of the rest of it. Mm -hmm. but, 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 you know, but there's one great thing that helps us stay motivated. Reaching our limit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta reach your limit, then you get motivated. Mm -hmm. So let's go, let's go. Uh, do it first. Real yeah. quick. Yes. Oh, 
um, you know, it's good that your, your teachings are great. I appreciate you. Um, you know, the world teaches us so much about fear, everything. All you hear is about fear. If you don't pay your rent, you kicked out. If you don't, you know, this, that. Mm -hmm. There's always a consequence, positive and a negative. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can only live in the moment because that's all we can do. <coughs> but realizing and understanding that perception, you know, is it, it, it's, it's great. I mean, yes. It's here to come from you, Earl. I, I appreciate where you, where you come from. It's a, this is a new thing for me. Um, I come from the churches. I'm a musician. I'm a drummer. Been playing all my life. Grew up with some great people in Minnesota. I like this. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Thank you, brother. It's true. I appreciate that. Thank you. You all are making me feel safe enough that just maybe I'm about to find and let go. <laughs> Conservative long enough. Okay, y'all got me close to rebuilding myself. I'm telling you, so to speak. <laughs> so, so okay, the last thing, this, this, yeah. this, what I was trying to conclude is, yeah. you know, just the things we're taught out here in this world right. are about controlling us. Mm -hmm. And it's I've always known and I've always had to feel inside of me to question stuff like religion and all these things. Mm -hmm. And I'm not questioning my mind no more because I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm actually challenging some things. Mm -hmm. And it's great to feel freedom. That's right. I haven't been under pressure. That's right. That's, that's my goal is freedom. I'm a Sagittarius in the, in the uh, astrological symbolism. Mm -hmm. And our sign is the sign of freedom. We're here to learn what the true meaning of freedom is. Because your, your, your birth chart is just a blueprint of the intentions of your soul and coming in this school called Earth. We're like we were sitting here with no grand reason or plan. It's like, it makes sense, you know. And so it's just another way for the spirit to communicate with us. And so once you know that, that, you, that I know that my power in my life is all going to be centered around what my perception of freedom is. And I used to, I used to believe it was talking about freedom of the body. So I was always seeking ways to free my body. Whether it was free that body from a job I didn't like, free that body from a car I didn't want it to sit in, or freedom. It was all about, or, or having freedom to do everything I want to do with my body. So it was all about freedom of the body. So I was always trying to have freedom of my body. And the Course in Miracles says, Said to me, he said, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna break this to you, buddy, but you can have freedom of the body or freedom of the mind, but you can't have both. Because mm. you're, you're gonna use one to serve the other. So either you're gonna use your body to come up with ways of freeing your mind, like when you go to classes, when you read, when you meditate, when you're around people you love, you're using your body to give you information that frees your mind. You're actually using your body to free your mind. It is your mind that creates your reality. So when your mind is free, you can have anything that you can imagine. But you're trying to get your body free. So you're using your body to free your mind. He says, but the truth is, as you achieve the goal, the means becomes less important. Right? If I want to change a tire and I take a jack out, the jack has meaning until I what? Change the tire. And once I change the tire and get my goal, I take the jack and put it back in the car and walk around all day looking at the jack. So look at that jack. <laughs> <laughs> the once the tires change, I don't need it, right? So so when you use your body to free your mind, that you can tell that the freer you become in your mind, the less focused you are on your body because you find that your mind can give you experiences that the experiences of your body pale by comparison. Even though you feel perfectly located, perfectly fine to give yourself experiences of the body whenever you get ready to. I, you know, I just, it's, there's a world of difference between innocent sex, for instance, and guilty sex. Mm -hmm. it, they, they're not, they don't feel anything, I did an experiment. <laughs> Go into my fellow research worker. <laughs> 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 We've come to a conclusion out of years of research <laughs> that innocence and love trumps. Yeah. That there is nothing better than connecting with someone on an intimate level that you love and you feel safe with, and you feel heard with, and you feel connected with, and you feel you can communicate in that thing with, and, you're, and you realize when you look into their eyes, you're looking into your eyes, and they look into your eyes, and they know they're looking into their eyes, so, they, so your happiness becomes very important to them because they know that your happiness is their happiness, and they want to be happy, so they want to be more conscious of your happiness too, and you feel the same way. It's, 
it, to connect with someone with that kind of attitude is so profound and so powerful and so pleasurable that you don't even need the body to do it. Yeah, yeah true. So then you learn how to do it no matter where you are. You know, <laughs> you can just be anywhere, <laughs> like right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just the savings on the gas money alone <laughs> is worth psychic development. Uh, it's very economical in these trying financial times. <laughs> now the body trip costs a lot less than a jet plane fare. <laughs> So, so are you all clear in all this stuff that's been going down? It has been a point. Yeah, I like to know what it is. I don't like let my subject matter get in the way of what I have to say. But um, what you what you can do is forgive God, forgive yourself for look, looking like things are not moving faster. So that would make you accept your present experience as being just perfect for you in this moment. And as soon as you experience any moment completely without judgment and with acceptance, you transcend it and go to the next level. Mm -hmm. So it's through the full acceptance and enjoyment of your physical experience that allows you to transcend it and go to a high level of consciousness. So, <laughs> so the point that I was making was, if you're just using your mind to come up with ways to get your body free, which really doesn't make any sense because the body can never be free. Do you know that? Because the body is a physical thing, form, so it's limited. It's, I can't go through it. It can't go through the wall, but your mind can. So you see. So when you use your mind to free your body, the more you focus on what your body wants, the less important your mind is to you. People who just want the body and focus on something about the body don't think. Mm -hmm. They find that their mind like checks out and they find themselves doing stuff that they don't even know why they're doing it and then wondering like, what, how the hell did I get in this situation? That's why you're in that situation because you're using your mind to free your body and so therefore you're more focused on your body than you are on your mind and so you're not thinking. So the more a person just focuses on their body, but what I mean by their body, just trying to get something that the body wants and trying to free the body, the less important their mind becomes to them and your mind is what's creating your experience. So it's much more important to free your mind because when you free your mind, your body can't help but be wherever your mind directs. So your body is going to always have an opportunity to experience whatever it is your mind is focused in on. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about your body so much anymore. Be more concerned about letting go of <coughs> your fear of being happy. So that your happiness can come to you in a greater volume without freaking you out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And stop pretending that you're more ready for something that hasn't shown up. Mm -hmm. Because if it hasn't shown up, it's because you're not ready for it. <laughs> That's, right. That's the only reason why it's not here. And guess what? Mm -hmm. It's the best thing in the world that it's not here. Yeah. I'll say it again. The thing that you want is not here. It's the best thing in the world that is not here, right in this moment. Mm -hmm. Now, it might be a moment that it does show up, that's the perfect moment. Mm -hmm. But we know one thing for sure, <laughs> this ain't it. <laughs> this, is not the, this is not the right moment for you to be a multi-millionaire person who won the Powerball. It happened to the person that it was the best person for it to happen to. That we all collectively decided who wins. It's, all a, it's a group decision. All of us win. Yeah. We just have the adventure of seeing how we got to the point we let ourselves realize we win. But all of us are going to win. 
all of us are going to win. It's going to turn out okay for all of us. Yay. Every one of us will experience real joy. Now see, that's as much happiness as y'all can take. <laughs> that was so sad. But that's okay. That was a start. That was a start. I told y'all y'all deserve to be completely happy. And we got... <laughs> but I'm just convinced I'm ready for the happiness of the universe. <laughs> so, I'm going to cover a little bit more. I decided a little about five minutes later. I'm going to cover a little bit more. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that cool with everybody? Y'all yeah. you know, willing to wait a little while before you run out to make some more guilt? <laughs> this is all. This is all. <laughs> I can't hardly wait. I can't hardly wait to get out there and do something. I know I'm going to be guilty. I'm telling you, that guilty stuff just feel better. Just do, don't it. Don't forget to uh, pass around your offering thing. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm glad I hired you. <laughs> My name is Earl, and I'd like to confess that I like to eat. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Those of you on the internet, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, go to my website, earlpurdy.com. Earlpurdy.com. And I'm also available for one-on-one -on -one healing sessions called Clarity Sessions, where I use my knowledge of astrology and numerology and the course of miracles, and we bring it to bear on whatever your issue is that you want another perception of and need to get unblocked about so you can move on. So. Amazing. Yes. yes they are. Thank you. I appreciate that. Tuesday night we have a fantastic class called Way of Mastery. Deep, very deep metaphysical spirituality. The, the kind of stuff that makes you go, hmm. It's, that's what I like to teach. That's what I like to share. So what do you do in a situation where you feel like you would sabotage yourself if you allowed yourself to have more happiness? What you, what you do is you constantly put yourself in an environment where you're constantly being reminded of your value. If you want to be able to handle more abundance and more love and more of the things that you want in your life, you've got to get to the point that you see it as ordinary for you to be happy and not special. Yep. You, you must get to the point you think is as, as much as you think is natural now for things not to go the way you think you want them to go all the time. At some point, it's going to be just the opposite, where you actually are going to look at it like there's nothing special to me being loved and happy because I was created to be loved and happy. I deserve to be loved and happy. It's no big deal that people are treating me kind of. That's the way we all ought to be treating each other all the time anyway. It shouldn't be something that I need some kind of a come, like a award or applause because I was loving. That's just the way we should be. So the, but at the point you make it ordinary is the point you'll let it show up the easiest. And as long as you keep it as something special, you're telling yourself, it's something that you can have every now and then that is difficult to have. That's why it's so special. So when you call it special, you're actually cutting down on how often it can occur. If it's ordinary for people to acknowledge you, then it's going to happen more often. But it doesn't mean you wouldn't go, thank you for acknowledging me. I really, really appreciate that. That helps me see that I'm beginning to change my mind about myself. And so I appreciate that. So, But it's also ordinary. So I'm seeing you all, I'm seeing you the way you may not see yourself until you can see yourself that way. I'm seeing each and every one of you as deserving more happiness and more healing and being able to handle it if it shows up without going into depression and trying to kill yourself. <laughs> you. you know, she just, want, she, just she, she just met the man of her dreams. Ah! And then she's running down the street like a raving maniac because she can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a trip. So the universe can't wait to give you everything you want. The universe can't wait to give you more. The universe can't wait to give you more. The universe can't wait to give you more. The universe wants to give you more. Do you know the universe wants to give you more? Okay. Yes. All right. So here we go. Let yourself breathe. I 
And I'm going to say this paragraph as many ways and many times as I can so you can hear the message that we were given today. I need something. Just give me a moment. Just a second. I deserve love. 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 I deserve abundance. I deserve abundance. I deserve abundance. Make it funky. I deserve abundance. 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 I deserve healing. 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 I deserve love. I deserve love. I deserve love. I deserve love. I deserve it. 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 Now, what I want you to do is I don't want you to work. I just want you to let me work for you. Let me do the heavy lifting. Will you just let yourself listen and let me do the heavy lifting? Will you do that? Will you do that? Okay. I need to channel the Holy Spirit. Hold up just a second. Now, I'm going to show this paragraph. Healing is always certain. Healing is so certain. It's impossible to let the fear go. It's impossible to let the fear go. Unless you're ready for love. Unless you're ready for love. When you accept the truth for yourself, when you accept the love for yourself, when you accept the love for yourself, when you accept the truth for yourself, when you accept the truth for yourself, when you accept, 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 accept the wealth for yourself, when you accept the relationship for yourself, when you accept that relationship for yourself, when you accept that career for yourself, when you accept that job for yourself, when you accept that God. It's time. Don't forget that the present is your point of power. Stand over to the side a little bit. Um, but the, the camera's right behind you there. I got to be seen. <laughs> Healing is always certain. I promise that it is. Don't do it, do it, do it. Don't commit suicide when there's somebody by your side. And then you got to remind yourself when you accept the truth for yourself, you accept it for everybody else. When you accept the truth. I don't really want to stop. Don't get intensely depressed. Right now, some of y'all might be bordering on depression. They're seeing us up here moving right now. Some people might be ready to kill themselves right now. I can hear it in their mind saying, I'm never coming back. <laughs> this is a cult. Because people are happy. <laughs> it must be a cult. <laughs> Use your body to read your mind. Use your body to read your mind. Use your body to read your mind. 
Use your body to free your mind. Use your body to free your mind. Use your body to free your mind. Use your body to free your mind. Use your body to free your mind. Use your body to free your mind. So tell yourself, I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as God created me.